In 2010, Princeton did a study where they measured if money really is correlated with happiness. And what they found was happiness does actually increase with money, but only up to a certain exact dollar amount per year. And we will talk about what that exact magical number that makes you happiest is, but first, it's important to understand what people actually think will make them happy and then what will actually make people happy because those two things are actually surprisingly different and most people don't actually know what makes makes they themselves happy. And so in this video, we're gonna talk about exactly what makes people happy, not anecdotally. We're gonna talk about real proven facts that make you happy and how to actually go about achieving that happiness for yourself. And then we're gonna reveal the exact dollar amount that will make you happiest because it's true with mo money comes mo problems. Trust me, I've been both poor and I've also been financially comfortable. Um, and so I know that with more money does come more responsibility more stress and more actual obligations that actually take away from your happiness. So we're gonna reveal the perfect amount of money to make per year to make you happiest. Stay tuned. People think that money will magically make you happy if you're not happy. And while that's true to a certain extent, if you're unhappy when you're poor, it's more than likely that you're also going to be unhappy if you ever do get rich. And so I wanna talk about the actual core things that make people happy, right? Because it's not money. No matter what people tell you, no matter what you might think right now, right? If you're struggling, if you're poor, if you think being rich would make you happy, I can promise you that it doesn't. And according to author James Wallman, there's actually seven types of happiness. Story, transformation, outside and offline, relationship, intensity, extraordinary, and status and significance. And we're going to talk about each one of these one by one. We'll start off with story, right? Everyone loves a good story. Everyone loves a good story like Harry Potter, right? Or, um, you know, Infinity War or any type of Avengers movie. Everyone loves a good story where a hero goes through some type of struggle and then overcomes that obstacle and actually comes out, you know, victorious in the end. And it's the same in people's lives. Everyone loves a good story. That's why storytelling over the years has been such a popular pastime, you know, whether it's through books or now through Netflix and the internet and blogs, um, or, you know, hundreds of years ago, uh, literally carved into tablets in stone, human beings just love stories and stories bring about happiness. And then transformation. Everyone loves when somebody transforms from something that was less to something that is more. And it could be a transformation, you know, with weight loss, getting into better shape. It could be a transformation financially, going from somebody who, you know, doesn't have a lot to somebody who's worked extremely hard and, you know, gets everything that they've ever wanted from a financial perspective. Everyone loves a good transformation. And if you yourself can transform, you know, less productive habits into more productive habits, what you're gonna find is over time, that's going to exponentiate and you're gonna become so much more successful um, just by transforming into something that is, you know, not as productive, that's not as uh, refined, that's not as good, into something that's much better. And I promise you, if you transform from bad to good, you'll be happy along the way. Number three is outside and offline. And this is a pretty obvious one, but outside and offline basically means actually getting rid of this guy right here, right? People have become so addicted to social media, to their phone, to text messages, to Facebook Messenger, to all these different notifications and stimuli that they they don't actually take any time to you know, go out and see the world, go out and see nature. When was the last time you went on a hike or you went anywhere without your actual cell phone? And so one of the keys to happiness, according to, you know, our author, James Wallman, who's actually, you know, really studied it deeply into this topic, one of the best ways is just to go completely offline, right? You know, and that doesn't mean like ignore all of your responsibilities. If you're saying to me, Kevin, I can't go offline. You know, I have work, I have my business, right? So do I, but you can plan ahead and you can actually hire people, you know, to, to make decisions in your stead. You can prepare to actually go offline, um, but you have to actually make time to do it because if you don't, um, you know, what you'll find is you never actually go offline because it's so easy to just be constantly connected to the cell phone 24 hours a day um, that you never actually get any time to experience, you know, your friends and your family and really, you know, be present in the moment, enjoying, you know, the people right in front of you rather than, you know, what's on uh, Instagram. Number four is an obvious one, which is relationships, right? We're not gonna talk too deeply about this, but human beings are social animals. And, you know, one of the best ways 
ways to actually become happier as a person is to have a relationship, you know, with your friends, with your family, or to have a relationship, you know, with a loved one, with a significant other, whether it's your, you know, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, um, whatever the case may be. Relationships are one of the keys to happiness, right? There's sayings, there's all types of different sayings and idioms that have been made over the years. It's better to have loved and lost than to never have loved at all, right? And, you know, you could probably make an argument against that if you've ever been through a really bad breakup, but, um, you know, I agree with that statement that relationships um, and really forming true relationships with your friends, with your family, um, with loved ones, with your significant other is probably the truest and best um, way to actually find real fulfillment and real happiness in the world. Number five is intensity, right? And what intensity to me means um, is really going all out on your goals. Like I, my personal, um, you know, experience um, with my business and with the things that I've been, you know, wanting to do as a person, um, as an entrepreneur, um, I always go full intensity. Like I don't tiptoe into things. Like when I started Amazon, I went all in on Amazon. I put every single dollar I had and thousands of dollars that I didn't have that I was literally putting on 0% APR credit cards. Um, when I started YouTube, right, I went all in. Um, even though it wasn't necessarily working right away, um, I still went all in. And so really being intense about what you do, whether it's a diet, whether it's you know lifting weights, working out, running, um, your business, uh, relationships, whatever it is, um, intensity really has a way of making you happy because you know that you left it all on the table. Whether you're playing a sport or you know you're trying to build a business um, or you're you know trying to find a girlfriend or whatever the case may be, if you really go all out and put 100% of yourself and your energy and you know for sure that you gave it your all, right? That's going to make you happier in the end because you leave it all on the table. And when you do that, you know there's nothing that you could have done differently. Number six is extraordinary, right? And extraordinary is a good one to me because everybody likes to be extraordinary. Nobody likes to be average. Nobody likes to be ordinary. And so if you can be extraordinary, even if it's at something that you love to do, right? It could be Dungeons and Dragons. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, if you're extraordinary at something that gives you a feeling of importance, right? It doesn't, it makes you feel like you're not average, that you're not part of the status quo, that you're not run of the mill um, and feeling above average and feeling literally what the word says, extraordinary has a way of actually making you feel much happier about yourself and about, you know, what you choose to do with your time and your habits um, and how you actually like, you know, spend your day to day um, on things that you enjoy doing, right? Because no one likes to be average. And so in a world of average people, being extraordinary can make you happy. And number seven, last but not least, status and significance, right? People love to feel like they have a high status. People love to feel significant. That's why it's literally called a significant other. Nobody likes to feel like they're insignificant. That's literally one of the worst feelings in the world, feeling lonely, feeling like you don't matter. And so, you know, some of the ways that people actually achieve status and significance is through money. But what you'll notice is money wasn't actually on the list of the seven things that truly make people happy. And why is that? According to numerous studies, money is just not simply enough to make us happy. Money in itself does not bring us happiness, but what money allows us to do, what money allows us to do in the freedom of time to do whatever you want, right? Freedom of experiences, being able to fly to Paris in the morning if you want to, or fly to Thailand and not having to worry about bills to pay, that is what makes us happy, right? Money itself is actually very boring, but what money allows us to do as human beings and the freedom that it grants us as people to do whatever we want and not have to worry about, you know, where we're gonna to sleep that night or what we're gonna eat the next day. That is what makes us happy, not money itself. And at the end of the day, what actually does make us happy if it's not money, right? And the answer is, experiences. Experiences with people that you have real relationships with, whether it's your friends, your family, loved ones, you know, your significant other, that is what makes us happy. And to reveal the answer to the actual question that we talked about at the beginning of this video, according to Princeton University, the magic number where if you go higher than that, you don't get any more additional happiness is $75,000 per year. If you make $76,000 per year, you're not going to get any happier. You're actually going to get sadder, right? Because even though you have slightly more money, that probably means on average that you have more responsibility, more obligations, and more stress in your life. So if you're worried and you want to become the next billionaire, maybe take a second to actually sit back and think about whether or not that's actually going to make you happy because on average, the answer is no. I know a lot of people with a lot of money who are not very happy, and I know a lot of people without too much money who are extremely happy living and doing the things that they want. And so at the end of the day, it really matters about you. You have to think to yourself, what makes you happy, right? And then literally reverse engineer how much money you would need to be 
happy in your life. So leave us a comment down below and let us know how much money do you need to be happy. Let us know how much money per month, how much money per year that you need to be happy. Let us know down in the comments and we will pick one of those comments to be our daily comment winner. Check out this video right here where I talk about why Instagram is making you sad even if you don't realize it. Check it out right here. Might not sound like a very good topic, but I promise you, if you're like most people, you probably need to hear it. See you there. All right, YouTube. <clears throat> I have a confession to make. 